What's happening here? Oh, welcome back to the channel. Is We're... this a Chris only tutorial? Well, you were doing the tutorial. Oh, I thought I thought because I do all of the tutorials, you would do okay, a tutorial. Okay, alright, we'll, we'll do a Chris only tutorial this time. Wow. It's gonna be on histograms, what you need to know about them, how to understand them, and why they're gonna be useful. Let's go. I'm a hot mess, so I'm gonna get out of this frame. <laughs> So let's get started. Histograms, they can be very confusing for a new photographer or a new videographer. And a lot of times people will just turn them off, tuck them away, hide them away so you don't see them and just never think of them again. But you shouldn't do that. And we're gonna go into what they are. We're gonna try to understand how to use them and hopefully you will put them back up so you can see them and use them to your advantage. Histograms are basically just a graph. It's a frequency plot. Uh, of how frequent certain pixel values occur in your image. So we're gonna use some illustrations here that I've created and I'm gonna pull my laptop up here so we can go through these together. First of all, let's look at this image of these two goofballs. And when you're looking at an image, you gotta think of it as a grid of pixels. It's basically just a stack of boxes that are all different colors. And speaking of color, let's strip out the color for now and only look at black and white. We're gonna simplify this here and we're going to reduce the resolution. The image turns into literally a grid of boxes. So now we're down to a very low resolution grid here. This one is I think five by four pixels. So there's 20 boxes here. And they're all various different shades of gray. In order to make this a little bit more simple, instead of having an eight bit image that has 256 shades of gray, we're gonna reduce the bit rate down to a two bit image. So there's only four shades of gray. Now we've got a four by five grid of different color shades of gray. And in fact, there's only four shades of gray, so we can actually put numbers on them. So we're gonna call pure black zero. We're gonna call dark gray one. We're gonna call light gray two. And we're gonna call pure white three. And again, this is simplistic. In a normal image that's eight bits, you'd have zero is black, 255 is white for a total of 256 different tones. In this case, obviously it's simplified, and now we've only got four different tones spread across 20 different pixels here. If you've been noticing, the histogram has changed radically, and now there's four spikes. And as you can guess, those four spikes correlate with the four different tones that we have in our image. So zero being black, one being dark gray, two being light gray, and three being pure white. You may also notice that they're of different heights. So we can actually look on the y-axis of our histogram. And if you can pretend that there's numbers there that are counting how many pixels there are. So for example, if we look in our image, we can count this Tetris looking block here. There's actually five black pixels or five pixels that have the value of zero. If you look on the graph I've made for you here, the height of that line goes up to five. Makes sense, right? Okay, let's look at our dark gray pixels or the pixels that are of value number one. There's only four of those pixels. So lo and behold, the spike for dark gray or one is only a count of four. So the light gray pixels or pixel value of two, this is the most frequently encountered value and there's six of them. So if you look at the histogram, this goes up to the level of six. And finally, pure white pixels, there's only five of them. So again, the spike is it goes only up to five. So it doesn't matter that there's one, two, three, four, or five pixels. The key is looking at how high those lines are relative to one another. If you can understand this on a simplified basis, we can go back up to our full blown, full resolution image and we can see how the histogram will change and how in turn it can be useful. If we just go right back to full resolution with only four pixel values, this is what our image would look like. As you can see here, it looks pretty crappy. It looks like a posterize effect and that's actually the effect that I used to get this. It's a four level posterize effect and it literally makes the image only four different tones. But if you look at the histogram, literally the histogram didn't change all that much. You still have four categories or four different pixel values, but their, rel their height relative one another only changed a little bit because we added more resolution, but for all intents and purposes, it looks more or less the same. Okay, so now we're back to our simplified two bit image that's a four by five pixel grid. Let's go back to an eight bit image. And what I mean by that is instead of having four potential values for each pixel, we're gonna go back to our full 256 color scale. So all of a sudden now, instead of having four spikes of different heights, you've got a bunch of different spikes all of the same height. 
And since we now know how histograms work, we can pretty easily explain this. Instead of having four categories, now we're gonna have 256 different categories, or zero to 255, which makes 256 possible shades of gray. Y axes, instead of having one through six, now we only have zero to or one. So that means there's only one of every different shade of gray you see in this grid. Before there was different height lines, but now there's all one height line only because every single box in this image is a different shade of gray. Every spike you see is the same height, i.e. one pixel. Okay, so let's start slowly adding back resolution to our image and you'll actually see the histogram start to take shape into what you're normally seeing. Okay, we're back to our full resolution image and now all of a sudden you can see there's millions of pixels now that we're charting on our histogram. So the histogram takes more of a fluid shape and you can see there's different bumps. There's a, a big bump on the right side of the histogram which corresponds to all those bright pixels that you see in the background of the sky, of the concrete in the background, the snow. And then there's a bunch of dark pixels. There's a spike of dark on the far left, which is your shadows. And those probably correspond to our hats, our pants, maybe the corners of the image which are darker because of the vignette. And then in the middle, there's a few humps that correspond to the various midtones in the image. So you can kind of see that just looking at the histogram gives you an idea of what tones are in your image. And that can be very useful for a lot of different reasons. The first thing that I use a histogram for is gauging exposure. So if you're taking photos, if your histogram is shifted to the far to the left and your image looks too dark and underexposed, your histogram will tell you that because all you'll see are spikes on the left side of the histogram. Conversely, if your image is overexposed or there's too many bright image values, you'll see your histogram is shifted to the right. If you have a perfectly exposed image, generally speaking, the histogram is gonna be evenly distributed. Now that's, there's always exceptions to this rule, but that's just a general rule of thumb. Okay, so we've only been talking about a black and white image here, which is a single data set, a single black and white channel. What about when you're dealing with a color image? So that's actually comprised of three different data sets or three different channels, as we say, a red, a green, and a blue channel, which are your primary colors when you're talking about additive color theory. I'm gonna, just gonna show you here one data set or the red channel here. So if we turn off the green and blue, our image turns completely red, which is what we'd expect. And you can see that the histogram for the red channel now only is, is the only one with data shown. If we turn the red channel off and turn on the green channel, you can see now the green channel is the only thing that shows data. And finally, the blue channel, again, you guessed it, the blue histogram now only has information. So if we turn all of these back on, you can see all three channels have information. They're all overlaid, and all of a sudden our image looks like it's in full living color. So what if you get rid of the red channel? Well, you're left with just the green and blue, and boom, you've got a cyan looking image. What if you take out the green channel and just go red and blue? Well, now you've got a magenta purpley looking image. Or what if finally, what if you just put red and green together? You guessed it, you've got ye a yellow looking image. It's all three of these channels combined that give you a full color image. Now it's mostly the combined RGB channel or the luminance channel that you're looking at when you're gauging exposure, but each individual color channel can be useful if you're trying to see if one particularly is clipped. If you've got a really red looking scene, your red channel might actually be clipped, but the blue and the green channels might not be. So the overall histogram doesn't look like it's overexposed, but you're, you can tell that your skin tones or your red is actually clipped. But it's more so advantageous to understand the different histograms for each channel when you're using things like curves and we're gonna do a tutorial on that later in fact I was going to do a curves tutorial but then I realized I really have to explain how histograms work to really get the most out of that so expect that video next so there you have it that's how a histogram works you now understand it and hopefully you can use it in your workflow whether it's gauging exposure when you take the image or gauging edits when you're doing post-processing. If you have any questions, ask below. It's a bit of a difficult topic to cover in one comprehensive video. We tried our best here to not geek out too much. If we went over a bit too fast, I'm gonna tell you right now, just watch it in half speed because it seems like people always say that we talk too fast in our videos. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. Oh, and Becky might be on the next one. High five. <laughs> How was the how was the first Beculus tutorial? Uh, I'm fired. Sounded real informative. So. I'm like, and the histogram does this.